selling speed in the prison. And he was selling it at less than the syndicate price. And he'd been warned, don't do that. And uh, Albert didn't take orders from anybody. And this time, they killed him. He was killed over two pounds of institution bacon. He was supposed to give a pound to someone else and didn't. The case of Albert DeSalvo's murder remains open. And so did the Boston Stranglings. Despite widespread public certainty that DeSalvo was the Strangler, some of those familiar with the case have lingering questions. Everyone wanted the Boston Strangler off the street. And if someone wanted to confess to it at that time and could give any reasons why he was, I think we were ready to, willing to accept it. He wanted to be world renowned. And of course, if you confess to the worst serial murder since Jack the Ripper, you're going to be famous, infamous. Another reason that he had was that someone convinced him that if he confessed to being the Boston Strangler, he could make it a lot of money. As far as the investigators are concerned, there is no mystery. Albert DeSalvo was the Boston Strangler. I've been asked many, many times over the years if I really thought that Albert DeSalvo was the Strangler. And I was positive 30 years ago, and I'm positive now. Albert DeSalvo never published the book that he thought would make him a rich man. But shortly before his death, he did write a poem and gave it to his lawyer, Tom Troy. Here's a story, the Strangler, yet untold. The man who claims he strangled 13 women, young and old. He struck within the light of day, leaving not one clue astray. To reveal his secret will bring him fame, but burden his family with unwanted shame. Today he sits in a prison cell, deep inside, only a secret he can tell. People everywhere are still in doubt. Is the strangler in prison or roaming about?